the success rates of uh, the, the clipping and the coiling or endovascular treatments with either coiling with or without stents is, is very high with uh, both procedures. So we're, um, we're fortunate, or patients are fortunate to have two treatment options. Um, it, there have been uh, many studies that have done comparing the two treatments, the clipping and the coiling treatment. Um, to each other and for different types of aneurysms and in different situations. And what seems to have come out over the last 20 years when comparing the two um, types of treatments is there are some aneurysms anatomically which are much better treated with endovascular or stent treatment. There's another group of aneurysms which are uh, look to be better treated with the clipping procedure just because of the configuration and anatomy. And then there's a large group of aneurysms in between um, that have anatomical uh, features that could be treated with clipping or coiling, uh, both successfully. And in those particular patients, um, the judgment on whether to do the clipping or coiling may depend on other factors other than the size and location of the aneurysm. Um, for example, what we know now is the um, clipping uh, procedure in um, the what we call anterior circulation aneurysms where the majority of them are in the front of the brain um, lasts longer um, and is more durable uh, than the coiling procedure in, in, in patients that have that have that have been looked at that have had either procedure for similar aneurysms and the um, the coiling procedure uh, looks to be safer initially up front uh, for the first uh, period of time after the coiling procedure, uh, but then the, um, the long-term outcome, they tend to be similar after a certain number of years. So um, based on that, patients uh, may, we may decide to recommend certain treatment based on patient's age, for example. If the um, patients are young, um, it, then they need to be protected for a longer period of time because they have more years to live. We may choose the clipping procedure because we know that that's a more durable procedure. The coiling procedure tends to be better in older age patients because uh, we usually get, can get rid of most of the aneurysm, if not all of it, with the coiling procedure, but there is a higher recurrence rate of the aneurysms with the coiling. Um, if they're in the older age group, they may never recur to the point where they're going to re-bleed, um, and so we may choose the, the coiling procedure in older individuals. And then there's the whole um, matter of patient choice. Sometimes we can't tell a patient that one patient, that one treatment is better than the other treatment, and it's up to them to decide uh, based on you know, their general health factors and, and other things where they live with accessibility to medical therapy and so forth, what treatment they would like to decide to have. Um, because we do tell the patients that the, the clipping procedure, for example, it involves a open surgery, they're in the hospital for a longer period of time in general, um, and um, they do have to take a you know, certain time off to work, from work to get through the procedure. The coiling procedure is generally shorter uh, sometimes they're out of the hospital in a day or two. It doesn't require open surgery, but it does require monitoring in the future to make sure the aneurysm is not recurring over time, and the patients need to be aware that they may have to have a retreatment uh, once or even multiple times if the aneurysm recurs. And even in some uh, uh, situations, they may have to go on to get a clipping procedure if the aneurysms recurred in a major way or several times after a coiling procedure. So these are factors that need to be considered if, if patients and the doctor come to a choice of treatment uh, for that particular patient and a particular type of aneurysm that they have.